Genesis 37. Jacob lived in the land of Canaan where his father had lived. This is the family history of Jacob. Joseph was a young man, 17 years old. He and his brothers cared for the flocks. His brothers were the sons of Bilhah and Zilpah, his father's wives. Joseph gave his father bad reports about his brothers. Joseph was born when his father Israel, also called Jacob, was old. So Israel loved Joseph more than his other sons. He made Joseph a special robe with long sleeves. Joseph's brothers saw that their father loved Joseph more than he loved them. So they hated their brother and could not speak to him politely. One time Joseph had a dream. When he told his brothers about it, they hated him even more. Joseph said, listen to the dream I had. We were in the field tying bundles of wheat together. My bundle stood up, and your bundles of wheat gathered around mine. Your bundles bowed down to mine. His brother said, Do you really think you will be king over us? Do you truly think you will rule over us? His brothers hated him even more. They hated him because of his dreams and what he had said. Then Joseph had another dream. He told his brothers about it also. He said, Listen. I had another dream. I saw the sun, moon, and eleven stars bowing down to me. Joseph also told his father about this dream. But his father scolded him, saying, What kind of dream is this? Do you really believe that your mother, your brothers, and I will bow down to you? Joseph's brothers were jealous of him. But his father thought about what all these things could mean. One day Joseph's brothers went to Shechem to herd their father's sheep. Jacob said to Joseph, Go to Shechem. Your brothers are there herding the sheep. Joseph answered, I will go. His father said, Go and see if your brothers and the sheep are all right. Then come back and tell me. So Joseph's father sent him from the valley of Hebron. When Joseph came to Shechem, a man found him wandering in the field. He asked Joseph, What are you looking for? Joseph answered, I am looking for my brothers. Can you tell me where they are herding the sheep? The man said, They have already gone. I heard them say they were going to Dothan. So Joseph went to look for his brothers and found them in Dothan. Joseph's brothers saw him coming from far away. Before he could reach them, they made a plan to kill him. They said to each other, Here comes that dreamer. Let's kill him and throw his body into one of the wells. We can tell our father that a wild animal killed him. Then we will see what will become of his dreams. But Reuben heard their plan and saved Joseph. He said, let's not kill him. Don't spill any blood. Throw him into this well here in the desert, but don't hurt him. Reuben planned to save Joseph later and send him back to his father. So when Joseph came to his brothers, They pulled off his robe with long sleeves. Then they threw him into the well. It was empty. There was no water in it. While Joseph was in the well, the brothers sat down to eat. When they looked up, they saw a group of Ishmaelites. They were traveling from Gilead to Egypt. Their camels were carrying spices, balm and myrrh. Then Judah said to his brothers, What will we gain if we kill our brother and hide his death? Let's sell him to the Ishmaelites. Then we will not be guilty of killing our own brother. After all, he is our brother, our own flesh and blood. And the other brothers agreed. So when the Midianite traders came by, the brothers took Joseph out of the well. They sold him to the Ishmaelites for eight ounces of silver. And the Ishmaelites took him to Egypt. Reuben was not with his brothers when they sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites. When Reuben came back to the well, Joseph was not there. Reuben tore his clothes to show he was sad. Then he went back to his brothers and said, The boy's not there. What will I do? The brothers killed a goat and dipped Joseph's long-sleeved robe in its blood. Then they brought the robe to their father. They said, We found this robe. Look it over carefully. See if it is your son's robe. Jacob looked it over and said, 
It is my son's robe. Some savage animal has eaten him. My son Joseph has been torn to pieces. Then Jacob tore his clothes and put on rough cloth to show that he was sad. He continued to be sad about his son for a long time. All of Jacob's sons and daughters tried to comfort him, but he could not be comforted. Jacob said, I will be sad about my son until the day I die. So Jacob cried for his son Joseph. Meanwhile, the Midianites who had brought Joseph had taken him to Egypt. There they sold him to Potiphar. Potiphar was an officer of the king of Egypt and captain of the palace guard. Mark chapter 7 Some Pharisees and some teachers of the law came from Jerusalem. They gathered around Jesus. They saw that some of Jesus' followers ate food with hands that were not clean. Not clean means that they did not wash their hands in the way the Pharisees said people must. The Pharisees and all the Jews never eat before washing their hands in this special way. They do this to follow the teaching given to them by their great people who lived before them. And when the Jews buy something in the market, they never eat it until they wash it in a special way. They also follow other rules of great people who lived before them. They follow rules about the washing of cups, pitchers and pots. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law said to Jesus, Your followers don't follow the rules given to us by our great people who live before us. Your followers eat their food with hands that are not clean. Why do they do this? Jesus answered, You are all hypocrites. Isaiah was right when he spoke about you. Isaiah wrote, These people show honor to me with words, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship of me is worthless. The things they teach are nothing but human rules they have memorized. You have stopped following the commands of God. Now you only follow the teachings of men. Then Jesus said to them, You think you are clever. You ignore the commands of God so that you can follow your own teachings. Moses said, Honor your father and mother. Then Moses also said, Anyone who says cruel things to his father or mother must be put to death. But you teach that a person can say to his father or mother, I have something I could use to help you, but I will not use it for you. I will give it to God. You are telling that person that he does not have to do anything for his father or mother. So you are teaching that it is not important to do what God said. You think that it is more important to follow your own rules, which you teach people, and you do many things like that. Jesus called the people to him again. He said, every person should listen to me and understand what I am saying. There is nothing a person puts into his body that makes him unclean. A person is made unclean by the things that come out of him. Let those with ears use them and listen. When Jesus left the people and went inside, his followers asked him about this story. Jesus said, Do you still have trouble understanding? Surely you know that nothing that enters a man from the outside can make him unclean. Food does not go into a person's mind. Food goes into his stomach. Then that food goes out of his body. When Jesus said this, he meant that there is no food that is unclean for people to eat. And Jesus said, The things that come out of a man are the things that make him unclean. All these evil things begin inside a person, in the mind. Evil thoughts, sexual immorality, stealing, murder, adultery, selfishness, doing bad things to other people, lying, doing sinful things, jealousy, saying bad things about people, pride and foolish living, All these evil things come from within a person. These things make a person unclean. Jesus left that place and went to the area around Tyre. He went into a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. But Jesus could not stay hidden. A woman heard that he was there. Her little daughter had an evil spirit in her. 
So the woman quickly came to Jesus and fell at his feet. She was not Jewish. She was Greek, born in Phoenicia in Syria. She begged Jesus to force the demon out of her daughter. Jesus told the woman, It's not right to take the children's bread and give it to the dogs. First, let the children eat all they want. She answered, That is true, Lord, but the dogs under the table can eat the pieces of food that the children don't eat. Then Jesus said, That is a very good answer. You may go. The demon has left your daughter. The woman went home and found her daughter lying in bed. The demon was gone. Then Jesus left the area around Tyre. He went through Sidon to Lake Galilee, to the area of the ten towns. While he was there, some people brought a man to him. This man was deaf and could not talk. The people begged Jesus to put his hands on the man to heal him. Jesus led the man away from the crowd to be alone with him. Jesus put his fingers in the man's ears. Then Jesus spit and touched the man's tongue. Jesus looked up to heaven and took a deep breath. He said to the man, Ephatha, this means be opened. When Jesus did this, the man was able to hear. He was also able to use his tongue and he spoke clearly. Jesus commanded the people not to tell anyone about what happened. But the more he commanded them, the more they told about it. They were really amazed. They said, Jesus does everything well. He makes the deaf hear. And those who can't talk, Jesus makes them able to speak. Job chapter 3. After seven days, Job spoke. He cursed the day he had been born. Job said, Let the day I was born be destroyed, and destroy the night when it was said a boy is born. Let that day turn to darkness. Let God not even care about it. Don't let light shine on that day. Let darkness and gloom have that day. Let a cloud hide that day. Let darkness cover its light. Let thick darkness capture that night. Don't count it among the days of the year. Don't put it in any of the months. Let that night be empty. Let no shout of joy be heard in it. Let the people who curse days curse that day. They know how to wake up the sea monster Leviathan. Let that day's morning star become dark. Let it wait for daylight, but don't let it come. Don't let it see the first light of dawn. This is because it allowed me to be born. That day did not hide trouble from my eyes. Why did I, didn't I die as soon as I was born? Why didn't I die when I came out of the womb? Why did my mother's knees receive me? Why did my mother's breasts feed me? If they had not been there, I would be lying dead in peace. I would be asleep and at rest. I would be asleep with kings and wise men of the earth. They built palaces for themselves that are now ruined. I would be asleep with rulers who had gold. They filled their houses with silver. Or why was I not buried like a child born dead? I wish I were like a baby who never saw the light of day. In the grave, the wicked stop causing trouble. The people who are tired are at rest. In the grave there is rest for the captives. They no longer hear the shout of the slave driver. People great and small are in the grave, and the slave is freed from his master. Why is life given to those who are in misery? Why is it given to those who are so unhappy? Some people want to die, but death does not come. They search for death more than for hidden treasure. They are very happy when they get to the grave. Life shouldn't be given to a man who doesn't know what will happen to him. It shouldn't be given to a man who feels trapped by God. I make sad sounds as I eat. My groans pour out like water. The thing I was afraid of has happened to me. The thing I dreaded has happened. I have no peace. I have no quietness. I have no rest. I only have trouble.
Romans 7. Brothers, all of you understand the law of Moses. So surely you know that the law rules over a person only while he's alive. For example, a woman must stay married to her husband as long as he is alive. But if her husband dies, then she is free from the law of marriage. But if she marries another man while her husband is still alive, the law says she is guilty of adultery. But if her husband dies, then the woman is free from the law of marriage. So if she marries another man after her husband dies, she is not guilty of adultery. In the same way, my brothers, your old selves died and you became free from the law through the body of Christ. Now you belong to someone else. You belong to the one who was raised from death. We belong to Christ so that we can be used in service to God. In the past, we were ruled by our sinful selves. The law made us want to do sinful things. And those sinful things we wanted to do controlled our bodies, so that the things we did were only bringing us death. In the past, the law held us like prisoners, but our old selves died, and we were made free from the law. So now we serve God in a new way, not in the old way with written rules. Now we serve God in the new way, with the Spirit. You might think that I am saying that sin and the law are the same thing. That is not true. But the law was the only way I could learn what sin meant. I would never have known what it means to want something wrong if the law had not said, you must not want to take your neighbor's things. And sin found a way to use that command and cause me to want every kind of wrong thing. So sin came to me because of that command. But without the law, sin has no power. I was alive without the law before I knew the law. But when the law's command came to me, then sin began to live, and I died because of sin. The command was meant to bring life, but for me that command brought death. Sin found a way to fool me by using the command. Sin used the command to make me die. So the law is holy. And the command is holy and right and good. Does this mean that something that is good brought death to me? No. Sin used something that is good to bring death to me. This happened so that I could see what sin is really like. The command was used to show that sin is something very evil. We know that the law is spiritual, but I am not spiritual. Sin rules me as if I were its slave. I do not understand the things I do. I do not do the good things I want to do, and I do the bad things I hate to do. And if I do not want to do the bad things I do, then that means that I agree that the law is good. But I am not really the one who is doing these bad things. It is sin living in me that does these things. Yes, I know that nothing good lives in me. I mean nothing good lives in the part of me that is earthly and sinful. I want to do the things that are good, but I do not do them. I do not do the good things that I want to do. I do the bad things that I do not want to do. So if I do things I do not want to do, then I am not the one doing those things. It is sin living in me that does those bad things. So I have learnt this rule. When I want to do good, evil is there with me. In my mind, I am happy with God's law. But I see another law working in my body. That law makes war against the law that my mind accepts. That other law working in my body is the law of sin. And that law makes me its prisoner. What a miserable man I am. Who will save me from this body that brings me death? God will. I thank him for saving me through Jesus Christ our Lord. So in my mind I am a slave to God's law, but in my sinful self I am a slave to the law of sin.